Hello, this presentation is regarding the interfacing of stepper motor module with the 8085 LCD kit. Firstly, I would like to introduce to you what a stepper motor is. A stepper motor is a brushless DC electric motor that divides a full rotation into a number of equal steps. The motor's position can then be commanded to move and hold at one of these steps without any position sensor for feedback as long as the motor is carefully sized to the application in respect to torque and speed. Each input pulse moves the shaft through a fixed angle. It has multiple electromagnets arranged around a central gear-shaped piece of iron. The electromagnets are energized by an external driver circuit or microcontroller. When the gears teeth are aligned to the first electromagnet, they are slightly offset from the next electromagnet. Three main types of stepper motors are there. They are permanent magnet stepper, variable reluctance stepper, and hybrid synchronous stepper motor. Permanent magnet motors use a permanent magnet in the rotor and operate on the attraction or repulsion between the rotor permanent magnet and the stator electromagnets. Variable reluctance motors have a plain iron rotor and operate based on the principle that minimum reluctance occurs with minimum gap. Therefore, the rotor points are attracted towards the stator magnet poles. Hybrid synchronous is a combination of the permanent magnet and variable reluctance types to maximize power in a small size. There are two basic binding arrangements for the electromagnetic coils in a two-phase stepper motor. They are bipolar and unipolar. The unipolar motor has one winding with center tape per phase. Each section of winding is switched on for each direction of magnetic field. The bipolar motor have a single winding per phase. The current in a winding needs to be reversed in order to reverse the magnetic pole. So the driving circuit must be more complicated. Here you can see how the electromagnet changes polarity with respect to input pulses and drives the motor forward. This is the assembly level code for interfacing. Here, we are using pro programmable input-output ports. The first two instructions are used to initialize the output ports. A value is passed to the accumulator, which is passed to port with a given address. 03 represents that the value is passed to the control register. Now, the value being passed is 18 in hexadecimal. The highest order bit of the 8-bit Control word format is used to set or reset mode for the port. It is active high. The next two bits are mode select bits for group A of the port. As stepper motor requires mode 0 type of data transfer, they are set to 00. zero. The next bit specifies whether port A is being used as input or an output port. Here, we deploy it as output port, so this bit is set to 0. The last four bits are used to pass parameters for port B and C and are irrelevant for the current task. Therefore, the first four bits need to be needs to be 1000 that is 8 and the and therefore the value being passed is 80 to the control register. The next 12 instructions are used for moving the stepper motor through four steps to complete one rotation. The values being passed at each step that is F9, F 5, F6, and FA represents which of the electromagnets are switched on or off. Their binary values decides the stepping sequence of the motor. The input to these electromagnets are connected to first four pins of port A. Therefore, these values should be provided to PA0 to 3 pins. Because of this, the address of output port is 00, that is, to port A register. The call instruction is used to call the delay subroutine at the specified memory location. At the end, the program counter jumps back to the start of the stepping sequence. To change the direction of rot rotation, the stepping sequence can be reversed. Also, the speed of the motor is determined by the time lag between execution of two stepping instructions and thus can be varied by changing delay time. Whenever precise motion requirement is there, stepper motors are preferred because they can achieve the task 
with high efficiency and low system complexity and cost compared to other alternatives. Apart from this, it requires no feedback mechanism, have excellent uh, response to starting, stopping and reversing, are low maintenance, have, have high torque at startup and low speed and are simple to design and construct. Because of all these factors, they find application in motion control positioning systems, various computer devices, cameras, automated systems, etc. Hope you liked the presentation. Thank you.